It was high explosive and one, the effects of it on, on men's bodies were so horrific and shocking that undoubtedly it affected the, the lives of men who saw that for the rest of their lives. I sometimes dread coming back to normal life with so many gaps, especially, of course, George Butterworth. Out of those seven who joined up together in August 1914, only three are left. I sometimes think it is wrong to have made friends with people much younger than oneself, because soon there will be only the middle-aged left. I think the first thing to point out that he's comparatively old uh, in 1914 to volunteer for military service at that late age of 42. It's a war of attrition that's taking place uh, and there's the new inventions of poison gas, flamethrowers, fighting in the air, all, the, um, all these attendant horrors of modern warfare uh, are used really for the first time. Well, I think uh, perhaps one ought to explain that he was a member of a field ambulance. And I think when uh, an ambulance uh, conjures up, I think, in people's mind a sort of a motor vehicle. That, that wasn't, in fact, the case. They were really the sort of the medical troops of a division. They dealt with the day-to-day -day diseases, illnesses and wounds of a division. But the experience of carrying bodies with all the dead weight cutting into your shoulders as you carry a stretcher with one other person in the middle of the night, that experience turned him into something more solitary more austere, and that's reflected in the music. Up, up to 1914, relatively unremarkable, like many people of, of his generation with his privileged financial position, it, it was a happy period, and you only got to listen to The Lark Ascending to, to understand the, the innocence that pervades music pre-war. The lark motive is very reminiscent of both around here and also the Somme area. The countryside that had been created by the First World War, it was absolute devastation. There wasn't a tree standing anywhere. It was a sea of mud and bodies and we, we've all seen the pictures. And you can hear this in his later music. But the, the lark ascending is, is of course, um, it's a reaction to that. It's an idyllic picture. If you look at the black clouds behind me, you get some idea of what was going on in his mind after the First World War with the Fourth Symphony, which is dark and angry. And then the Fifth Symphony is, has a strange visionary quality, an otherworldly quality. And then you get to the Sixth Symphony, which is one of the bleakest pieces of music ever written. And he lost some very close friends in the war, particularly George Butterworth, who could have been as great a composer as Vaughan Williams if he had not been killed on the Somme in 1916. There's still a trench there now called Butterworth Trench, marking the place where he was shot. That loss was dreadful for Vaughan Williams, and the fourth movement of the Pastoral Symphony is an, an elegy to lost friends. And the depth of emotion that Vaughan Williams allows to come through this rather understated, detached way, suddenly there's this warmth, suddenly there's this surge of melody in the fourth movement that captures his feeling of these lost friends. And that moment is unforgettable, and it makes that particular symphony one for me of the greatest poignancy, and the one I would take with me to any desert island.